Imagine if you wanted to talk to somebody, uh, but they couldn't understand what you were saying. Uh, what would you do? Smoke signals? I don't think so. Pictures, I guess, are the simplest things. And there is a program that has been designed for modern multimedia, you know, oh, iPads. What, what else am I going to say? Uh, for people with autism and delayed speech, showing symbols and pictures so that they can communicate. An app has been developed by Lisa Domican, who's with me as we speak. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. How are you? Why, why do autistic people, people who are suffering from autism, uh, need symbols rather? Can't they speak? About half of them would have very delayed speech development and then half of those, again, would probably never learn to speak. And that's because autism is a sensory disability. Everything is distorted, whether it be under or over. They hear things too loud or they hear things too quiet. Mm -hmm. So they don't necessarily learn to imitate sound, but they are often strongly visual thinkers. They often think very much in pictures. So just like yourself when you're travelling in a foreign country. Yeah, perfect example. And you might see a shop that has the name of the shop and then you can see what's inside the shop. You can probably remember the word supermarsh because you can see it's a supermarket. The visual backs up the sound and it makes it easier for you to learn it very quickly, particularly if you're hungry and you're thirsty and you want to go to the supermarket. So they do, uh, clearly people with uh, an autistic condition uh, have thoughts which they wish to communicate. They just have no means to do it under exactly, normal circumstances. Exactly, exactly. Right. Um, and the old system tended to involve books. You have one there. Yep, uh, yep. I'll make a nice uh, little Velcro crackle for the, for the uh, sound of it. A giant book with far too many symbols. It's a, it's a bit like Chinese. Each one is a character. Exactly. That's a very, very good analogy. I'm, um, I'm good at that stuff. <laughs> the, the sequence of the pictures can change the meaning. And you can see I've got a sentence there that says, I want orange chocolate. So if you can think of your favorite chocolate brand, mm -hmm. you might ask for the color of the, the label and then have that handed to you, and you would be very happy because you've got your favourite thing, so there's no need to be angry or frustrated anymore. So step by step, we prompt an autistic person to hand over a picture in exchange for something that they like. And before we start, we always find out what they actually like because everybody learns more quickly if you use the things that interest them. And this is a system that has been employed for years, I yeah, take it. Yeah, well over 10 years. It's called Picture Exchange Communication System. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic because you can prompt it. You can prompt someone to make a sign for sign language. Mm -hmm. You can prompt someone to hand over a picture. But you can't breathe air through their larynx and make them make a word. Mm -hmm. So in order to make communication rewarding, you have to use something promptable. And seriously, the day that you teach someone who really wants a cookie to hand over a picture and you give them a cookie straight away, mm -hmm. they learn those steps very quickly. But, well, it's, it's, I've been getting this unfortunate image of training a dog where if you reward them with a cookie at the end of doing the trick. Well, but, behavioural analysis is very straightforward. It's all about observable behaviour. And uh, very often I've found, because I've worked with people who do horse training, mm -hmm. the steps are very similar. Rather than working out what people feel or what they're thinking, you're just looking exactly at what they're doing mm -hmm. and giving them a reason to do it again. So before there was a means like the pictorial means that you have there, the old-fashioned one with lots of little pieces of paper and symbols, uh, how did autistic people fare? Did they just put them in dungeons and give up? No. Um, I was very focused on giving my daughter a voice. So I committed a lot of time to learning how to do this, to printing the pictures and to giving her a means of communication so that she had a very large vocabulary. The problem is when your commitment starts to wane because you get sick of printing the pictures and putting the Velcro on mm -hmm. or their picture vocabulary is so huge that you're literally carrying around what is yes. a huge A4 folder of pictures yep. so that wherever you might be, they can make a request or point out something that they want. A piece of information in the cracks. Your daughter? My daughter, Grace, yes. She's autistic? Yes. I have two children with autism. Really? My son, Liam, didn't talk at all and uh -huh. I did this picture thing with him for three months uh -huh. and because we were handing the pictures over and saying the words together mm -hmm. and he's a very clever boy he started to repeat the words he started talking and within three months the picture book was forgotten about 
So notwithstanding the fact that he has aspects of autism, he can function in our world in a relatively... Yes, yes. He's still severely autistic, but he is very, very smart mm -hmm. and very, very literate. So he was able to learn to speak. His world is very much shaped around what he wants to do. What does he want to do? Because that's always fascinating <laughs> with autistic people. He's a big film buff. Okay. He loves DVDs. He loves uh, finding the, the scene selection and putting the credits on. So he, does he have an encyclopedic knowledge of some very small detail that appears in every film? Yes, he can cross-reference all the actors, right. including voice actors from animation, and tell you which other films. He's like IMDb, but right. a yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he retypes them all yeah. at about 150 words a minute. He used to recast... He used was, to recast, yes, make yeah. hypothetical films with his well, favourite Well, he recast character. Bananas in Pyjamas with Colin Farrell and uh, different actors in the lead roles. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he's 13 now, so he's a big, he's almost a man in size, but he is very, very literate. Mm -hmm. And that's my way of getting to him. If I want him to go for a walk in the Botanic Gardens in Ballarat, I'll say, let's go and see The Iron Giant, which is the statue of William Wallace. Mm -hmm. He likes the film The Iron Giant. I can get him to do it. And it's just a way of, of connecting with him. Um, you say he's very literate. Is it, is it uh, common that people who are autistic uh, can read and write but not necessarily speak? Yes. Okay. It's hard to demonstrate it. Right. Now, Gracie was a lot more severe to start with. And when I started the picture communication system with her, she learned the pictures very well, right. but she didn't repeat anything I said. And I was still using the pictures with her six years later, which is why there's this big book in front of me. Now, this is the cleaned up version of the book. This is the one you can bring through Australian Customs. The other one's got crumbs and sand and dirt. Because and it lives, that book lives a normal life. Absolutely. It yeah. goes everywhere with you. Um, Gracie didn't demonstrate the ability to read, but one day I was showing her how to Google a favourite character mm -hmm. and I typed in E L M O. And then she took the mouse and she cursed backwards and she put in O-S-W-A-L-D, which is the name of a little purple octopus. Mm -hmm. Then she scrolled through the 250,000 entries for the other very famous Oswald mm -hmm. and found Oswald the little blue octopus. <laughs> so I thought, okay, she can read. Uh, but you, because she wasn't communicative uh, through verbal means, so there would not necessarily be any, any way of knowing no, whether she could read no. or not. And it, the only time, this is this, this pairing thing, what's important to her, the only time she saw the point of demonstrating this to me mm -hmm. was to Google a clip on YouTube so she could watch Oswald the Octopus. I have to ask, um, is there a history in your family of autism? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've got a nephew in the UK. He's mm -hmm. 21 now. He's very severe, and because of the the time that he was diagnosed, he would have been uh, starting his intervention quite late for autism. He would have been four or five. Mm -hmm. um, what was known then isn't, you know, it's just come on so much now, and everybody knows that early intervention is the key. So Owen has never developed speech. He's got a huge picture exchange communication system, and he lives in supported accommodation now. But when Liam came along, we were very lucky to have been handed a book about applied behavioural analysis, mm -hmm. which there would have been a conference very recently in Melbourne about this. And it's just going back to what you were saying. You're using what's interesting to that person. Yes. You're breaking the steps of what you want to teach them down to the steps that suit them. And you're teaching it to them in the way that they want to learn. Uh, the notion of autism uh, being hereditary is, uh, it can be shown. I think there, there, there's various kind of Jewish enclaves from particular parts of Poland who are vastly overrate, over overrepresented in uh, autism. I haven't heard of, uh, of the Irish autistic. But, uh. um, well, Irish people are very, very literary and very visual. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I find hardest about living in Ireland, um, because I'm Australian and a straight speaker and probably Asperger's myself, they talk in little circles of pictures. 
Mm-hmm. So they never say something in one word when they can use 15 to say right. the same thing. So it is an unusual disability to have in a country like that. However, as you probably know, they have an enormous capacity for empathy and for caring for people in their society who may not be as strong as them. Mm. So it's, it's very, very like Australia like that. They're looking after people who need more help. Compared to all the other things you've had to deal with, uh, the problem that you've solved with the iPad is a tiny problem. You have simply transposed that notion into an electronic form. Uh, Literally looking out the window of the car and looking at an ad for iPhone on the side of a bus, Mm -hmm. my little pictorial brain just thought, oh, that looks like Gracie's book. And then it sort of st- 